Hello and welcome to Small Gold's update on the Shanghai Gold Exchange withdrawals for 2016 and the month of December 2016. Well, the Shanghai Gold Exchange withdrawals fell 24% in 2016 after a record year of 2,576. Tons of gold withdrawn in 2015. In 2016, gold withdrawals in the Shanghai Gold Exchange were 1,970 or a 23.5% drop partially driven by a big decline in the first half of the year in gold withdrawals because the price, I suspect, rose very high uh, very quickly in the first half of 2016 and that, I believe, curbed physical gold demand on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. During 2016, the only year where month over month, year over year, gold withdrawals uh, increase was November, which was up slightly over the year before. December 2016 itself also was down from 2015's December. Now if you're interested in gold, you get this. We've got uh, a number of gold affiliates on smoggle.com and also some links below where you can purchase gold. And the reason I suggest you do so is not because I'm giving investment advice or that I think you should buy gold, but if you are watching this channel, you probably are interested in buying gold and you've probably made an independent determination that you'd like to buy gold. And if you do and you'd like to help out the website, Small Gold, you can do so through the links below this podcast, this YouTube, and also on the Small Gold website where you can compare prices and shipping and make your purchases and if you do Smoggle gets a small commission and you pay no more no less than if you visited these sites directly so please check it out also we're checking out the Chinese pandas the set of just the American gold eagles and other gold and silver coins you can also check out the Chinese silver and gold pandas I've left a link a couple of links here and a couple of links below now keep in mind the Chinese pandas in the last year or so have changed to the metric system so a one ounce silver Chinese panda is no longer a one ounce Chinese silver panda it is a uh, 10 gram panda and the same with the uh, Chinese gold pandas are not one ounce they're about 30 grams so both coins are slightly smaller than normal but they moved over to the metric system so keep that in mind when you check out pricing the silver pandas do have a slightly higher premium when they're first released than other silver coins issued by Sovereign Mints. They're issued in a lower amount. They also have higher premiums on the resale, generally. It's no guarantee that the ones that are issued in 2016 or 17 will have higher premiums. But in the past, it's clear that the older ones do have higher premiums. And the same with the Chinese gold pandas, but to a lesser extent. So please check those out on smoggle.com or at the links below. Now, the Shanghai Gold Exchange withdrawals, as we mentioned, were 1,970 tons. Put that in perspective. There's about 3,000 tons of gold mined every year for the last few years. So still a decent chunk of the current gold mining supply, but it just wasn't the 2,576 that was delivered, uh, withdrawn last year. And falling gold prices, though, did increase. We, didn't, we weren't down that much in December, month over month. We were down um, just a few percent. As I say, in November, we were up. And that's basically because prices did fall at the end of November and December, although they started to rise again at the end of December. Now, here's a chart that shows the last two years. And these are the, the really the big couple of years where the Shanghai Gold Exchange started to see a big upward draft in its uh, monthly withdrawals. At one point, they almost hit 300 back in 2015 in the summer. Uh, and you could see that 2016 was slightly subdued in these months here, but it moved up a bit in, towards the end of the year. Overall, not a bad year. However, it was, let's scroll down here to the annual chart before we look at December. Uh, the Gold withdrawals on the Shanghai Gold Exchange had been on a steady upward path almost inexorably. There's a bit of a downdraft there between 2013 and 14, 
But the 1970 tons that were delivered or withdrawn on the Shanghai Gold Exchange in 2016 were the lowest since 2012. Now, they're still substantially higher than 2012, but they're not, they didn't crack 2000 this in 2016 like they had done in 2013 and 2014. We also noted yesterday or a couple of days ago that the People's Bank of China is not adding, has not added gold in a couple of months. It also looks like they might have sold some gold based on the um, what they list on their balance sheet is the value of the gold. It looks like if you take what Nick Laird at the Gold Charts or Us did, he looked at that and he calculated the price of what they list as the dollar value and the SDR value of gold on their balance sheet. And it looks like they might have shed about 20 tons. Although Bloomberg reported that they just didn't add any. And it's kind of hard to tell from uh, the Chinese reporting, but I believe that Nick Laird's calculation is probably the correct one. So the People's Bank of China is indeed selling gold, and that even highlights further my point that what happens at the People's Bank of China is not China. There were still a very large amount of gold withdrawn in December. In fact, 196 tons were withdrawn at the Shanghai Gold Exchange, but perhaps China, the People's Bank of China sold gold. So that clearly highlights that there is a distinction between People's Bank of China and gold in China, because obviously this 196 tons of gold that was drawn did not go to the People's Bank of China. It went elsewhere to other institutions and other individuals in China. Now, December was a decent month, but still, it was the lowest December, again, since, since 2012, although it's a decent amount, uh, one of the higher numbers of the year for the Shanghai Gold Exchange. So the Shanghai Gold Exchange is a good proxy for demand in China, uh, gold demand. Now let's take a look at the, got one more chart, which I don't have up here. Hold on. Okay, here, here is the chart. I wanted to show you that shows that gold demand in China exceeds clearly the People's Bank of China's gold acquisitions. So we just mentioned that uh, gold withdrawals on the Shanghai Gold Exchange were 196 tons of gold. Now in October, through Hong Kong, where China does report the gold that it gets from Hong Kong, it does not report what it gets through Shanghai. So there's additional gold there. But there were 61 tons of gold that went through Hong Kong into uh, China. Now that's a percentage. It's not all of the gold that ended up withdrawn on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. So that was about 40%. You can see from the chart here, this chart shows gold imports versus Hong Kong, Shanghai Gold Exchange withdraws, and then Hong Kong imports as a percentage of Shanghai Gold Exchange withdrawals. So the Shanghai Gold Exchange is not funded entirely by imports of gold into China via Hong Kong, as we've mentioned in prior podcasts, China also has a domestic, a domestic gold mining production that's the largest in the world, about 450, 500 tons a year, in addition to the gold that they, they import through Hong Kong, not including the gold they also import through Shanghai. And then, of course, whatever other gold is in the country historically through prior imports and prior uh, domestic mining production. So this is a new chart by Nick Laird at, at Gold Charts. So I just wanted to show you that uh, sometimes the the percentage is a little higher, but in general, there is more gold withdrawn on the Shanghai Gold Exchange in a given month than the amount of gold that they pull through Hong Kong. That about does it. Just a reminder to please subscribe to smallgold.com. Fill your email address up at the top of smallgold.com. It's the best way to stay in touch and to get updates when they come out. You can take a look at the charts better. Also, you can email me through the Small Gold website. And that about does it. Talk to you tomorrow.